So, Your Majesty, Your Excellencies, my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> it's my great pleasure to address this seminar on trafficking with a special focus on children, co-organized by the Embassy of Sweden to the Holy See and the Pontifical Academy for Social Sciences. I heartily thank them for this timely initiative that aims at identifying measures to be taken, both at the national and international levels, in order to enhance the right of children and especially to better protect them from the scourge of trafficking. This year, Your Excellencies, we celebrate the 25th anniversary of the entry into force of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. The Holy See was one of the first entities to ratify this important agreement. And it is also a party to some of its optional protocols, namely the optional protocol on the involvement of children in armed conflict and the optional protocol on the sale of children, child prostitution, and child pornography. As we all know, children continue, by reason of their defenselessness, to be the victims of very many forms of violence and enslavement, and are trafficked for a variety of purposes. This persists. Despite diverse international and national action and the strategies and in spite of the agreement and protocols already mentioned and other relevant international agreements such as the protocol to prevent, to suppress, to punish trafficking in persons, especially women and children, and the protocol against the smuggling of migrants by land by sea and by air. The ways in which children are horribly victimized include the sale of organs, recruitment for prostitution, pornography and the narcotics trade, forced begging, disguised forms of cross-border adoption, forced marriages, recruitment as soldiers, enslavement by terrorist groups and forced labor in both the formal and the informal sectors, in domestic or agricultural workplaces, or in the manufacturing and mining industries. Many trafficked children are unaccompanied migrant miners. Some of whom lose their lives in the migration process. While others still, upon arriving at their destination, after a grueling journey, marked by fear and insecurity, are detained in often inhumane conditions. This demonstrates that international agreements and action plans, though necessary, are not able to put an end to the scourge of the trafficking of children. And if the international community for, uh, fails to also address the root causes of this phenomenon, then we need to do a little bit of brainstorming to find alternatives. The first of the root causes, I think, is poverty and underdevelopment, especially when combined with a lack of access to education or scarce employment opportunities. In fact, not only do they provide a fertile ground where organized networks of traffickers can find potential victims, but they also push hopeless people into the pernicious part of criminality. It goes without saying that access to a quality, access to quality education for all and the creation of decent work opportunities are then of crucial importance. Secondly, 
At the source of trafficking in children, we often find armed conflicts and other situations of violence and terrorism. Children are trafficked to be recruited as soldiers or exploited, even sometimes sexually, by terrorist groups and other combatants. Thus, the Holy See has several times called upon the international community for vigorous diplomacy in order to put an end to armed conflicts, to all situations of violence, and to terrorism. Thirdly, I deplore the role played by corruption. As traffickers often, traffickers often require the complicity of inter intermediaries, be they law enforcement personnel, state officials, or civil and military institutions. In fact, trafficking in children as well as other forms of enslavement of children are still possible because we are living in a world divided by greed, looking for easy gain, wounded by selfishness, which threatens human life and the family. So the fight against corruption must be raised to the highest of priorities. As Pope Francis recently said, corruption is a greater ill than sin. More than forgiven, this ill must be treated. Finally, Your Majesty, we must reverse the spread of the throw away culture in which human beings are themselves considered consumer goods to be used and then to be discarded. Instead, we need to promote a culture of fraternity in which the inherent dignity of each and every person from conception to natural death is respected and valued. Accordingly, to end the trafficking of children, we must first achieve a conversion of hearts and conversion of the minds. Trafficked children are victims of the demand for low-cost labor and products even in opulent societies. The desire of customers for organs, for drugs, child prostitutes, and child pornography, and so on. So the Holy See calls repeatedly on various fora for effective action on the scourge of human trafficking and its root causes. And so, for example, in the recent U.S. Security Council open debate on children in armed conflict, the Holy See strongly condemned the increasing abduction and forcible recruitment of children by armed groups. And in his most recent message for the World Day of Peace, entitled No Mulonga Slaves But Brothers and Sisters, Pope Francis encouraged religious congregations Catholic-inspired organizations and all people of goodwill in accordance with their specific roles and responsibilities to take a proactive part in a common engagement against trafficking. Your Excellency, Your, uh, Your Majesty, Your Excellencies, my dear brothers and sisters, I pray then that the present seminar contributes significantly to this effort and to help us all find a way of dealing with and overcoming this scourge once and for all. Thank you. Thank you, Your Majesty, for coming. And thank all of you, Excellencies, for your presence and participation. Thank you.